I am visible, I am audible to people, yeah, I guess so. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of people like me are not visible and audible to a lot of the audience because we've been always seen as a transparent glass. So you just like to see through it without recognizing that there is an individual or a human being who probably would deserve services. Many times, transgender people, when it talks to the global, um, you know, universal health excess or universal social well-being, we are always been excluded. The reason why is that I think the amount of the kind of identity that we have, many times we become subject to the transphobia, we become the subject to the stigma and discrimination. This stigma and discrimination actually links us to the various problems, specifically around lack of health access, specifically around violence. Uh, I was just trying to look into the numbers and you know, from 2008 to 2014, uh, almost 1,529 people have been, uh, you know, kind of murdered who are a transgender people uh, that's that's and there are some there are some there are some systematic uh, work that is happening to monitor this program but what i want to talk about is that when we talk about the exclusions uh, you know we need to understand that we are purely been excluded based on our gender identity and because uh, anything that you cannot understand people either would like to uh, you know kind of put that into a corner or i, I either like to treat them as a ghost i think for, for a lot of people transgenders are considered to be a ghost I was just trying to talk to, I was part of the differential guideline discussions with WHO also and I was just trying to talk to some of the researchers about whether we, do we have real numbers about transgenders? And I think nobody has a real number. You know, in countries like India also, who has been progressively talked about transgender rights and transgender inclusion, we still don't have numbers. There are, there are differential numbers that comes across and numbers are directly linked with the human resource. Uh, so unless you don't have numbers, you cannot have services, you cannot have strategies, policies that are subject to this kind of a population. There are there a are huge amount of health hazard. And when I mean to say health, Maitre, I want to talk about not just about HIV AIDS. I think health for transgender people, trans men, trans women, intersex people, it could be much more beyond that. For us, health starts right from the acceptance, uh, right from, uh, you know, coming from the counseling or, or mental health support which we don't have, we, we really lack with that, because of that a lot of people uh, become subject to the suicidal tendencies. And that, that, that's a harsh reality of the fact. When we talk about HIV AIDS itself, 19% of population, uh, you know, is actually living with HIV, uh, you know, scenario and 49% of transgender people are likely to get HIV infections because we are, in, we are, we are trapped into this vicious circle. We don't have support from our home, we run away from our houses at the early age, we are subject to the sex work because there's a lack of employment and education uh, facilities. Within the educational systems also there's a huge amount of stigma discrimination that prevails for transgender people. And you are just caught up into this vicious circle where you don't have, uh, you don't have anywhere to go. Uh, you, 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 just, you just keep trapped on this situation. The other thing about that, that when we talk about social inclusion, I just want to talk about it, the gender affirmation makes a lot of important things. Like for example, my gender certificates are considered to be a male and I don't want to identify myself as a male. When I don't want to identify myself as a male and when you are trying to provide me social services which are subject to, the, uh, subject to my birth gender, I would not, I would birth sex, I would not like to access those services. Same goes with the health uh, uh, provider situ situations also. Whenever we want to access the health, majority of transgender people rely heavily on the private medical uh, health practitioners, not because they get the better services, but they get a dignity over there. Right. Which that dignity has been a lot of time compromised uh, in the health systems. Thank you so much.